sleep, so I've got to keep you up as much as I can. We all know that November is the month of Thanksgiving, right? Um, on Facebook, we see day 18, I am thankful for. Day 19, I am thankful for. We see that all over the place. So this week, we have the opportunity to celebrate Thanksgiving. We get to celebrate with our family, our friends, to watch, um, whether it be the parade in the morning or uh, we're watching football. But we have a chance to celebrate with the people that we love. And, and this morning, I want to take some time to look at the gift of God's unfailing love. So there are many things that we cannot count on in this ever-changing world. But the one thing that we can count on is God's unfailing love. As usual this morning, um, I'm going to have to ask for you guys to get your Bibles out. And the main scripture is going to be Psalms 107. But I'm going to uh, throw in a, a few more in there as well. And, and we'll have some of that on the screen for you to follow along. So in Psalms 107, it, it's basically um, a celebration of the Israelites returning from exile from the foreign land. So we'll start with verses 1 through 3. And it says, Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those He redeemed from the hand of the foe, those He gathered from the lands, from east and west, and from north and south. So it starts off with a, a grateful acknowledgement of God's unfailing, steadfast love for His people. You see, the world we live in, um, it's full of love, but many times that love is conditional. And God's love is unconditional. Love in this world only lasts for a season, but God's love endures forever. In Romans chapter 8, verse 35, it says on the screen, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardships or persecutions or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? You see, even in the New Testament, it tells us that God's love is unfailing. Not even those things can separate us from it. So the awesome thing in Psalms 107 is that it shows us that the author paints us four beautiful pictures that we get to look at. And the first picture is found in verses 4 through 9. It says, Some wandered in the desert wastelands finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for His unfailing love and His wonderful deeds for mankind. For He satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry. So the first picture this morning is, is this. God's love is unfailing because God's love does not fail to replenish us. You see, the author paints this picture of, of the Israelites wandering. They're wandering in a desert looking for a home, looking for a place to settle. Even though we aren't necessarily certain of the events that the author is trying to uh, get across, uh, we can see some wonderful applications that we can apply to our lives today. So as the Israelites were wandering, they were, like I said, seeking a home. God replenished them. In other words, God provided for their needs. And God does that today for us we're wandering around, we are wandering around constantly looking for something. Whether that be our next house or our new vehicle, we are constantly looking. 
But God doesn't let us die in the desert just like he didn't let the Israelites die in the desert. He looks after us, he cares for us, and he provides for us. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 44 and 45, it reads, But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son, son to rise on the evil and the good, and he sends rain on the righteous and unrighteous. So my question this morning is, why would God provide for those people that may never decide to be His? That's kind of a tough question. Why would God, God provide for those who may never decide to be His? Well, the first reason we've already talked about it is He has that unconditional love for all of His people. The second reason is found in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. And it says this, Who wants all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? You see the word all. But this does not mean that all will. But rather, God desires all to do so. And He will, he will give them the opportunity to do so when their time is right, when they're willing to make that choice. So when the Israelites were released from Egypt, uh, they were absolutely terrified. They were terrified that God released them only to be killed by their enemy. And at the time, that was the Egyptian army. But that wasn't God's plan. You see, God provided a way of an escape and then later, while they were wandering, He provided for their needs. He provided for their needs even though that they were stubborn at times. He provided for their needs even though that they were disobedient at times. You see, the point is God will provide. This is why we see the praise in verse 8. If we look at verse 8, it is repeated word for word. In verses 15, 21, and 31. And it says, For his wonderful deeds for mankind. For his wonderful deeds for mankind. And, and that's to show us that he's going to provide for us in many ways. So the second picture we get to look at this morning is in um, Psalms 107, still uh, 10 through 16. And it reads, some sat in darkness, in other darkness. Prisoners suffered in iron chains because they rebelled against God's commands and despised the plans of the Most High. So he subjected them to bitter labor. They stumbled, and there was no one to help. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He brought them out of their darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away their chains. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he breaks down gates of bronze and cuts through bars of iron. See, the, the second picture we get to see this morning is God's love is unfailing because God's love <coughs> does not fail to release us. In verse 10, it, it, it paints a pretty bleak picture for us. Sitting in utter darkness. See, that seems like a rather difficult situation if you ask me. We, we see this picture where the people more or less did it to themselves. Because we're told that they rebelled against God's word. And ignored his counsel. Because the people desired other things, they turned away from God. And he allowed it to happen. But the people paid for the price, you see. But when, when they cried out, it says that they cried out to the Lord in their troubles. What happened? God responds by releasing them and delivering them from their captivity. 
I want you to notice that even though the people turned away from God, it didn't matter. God didn't count them off or lost. He said, come here. I have something else for you. He could have easily said, sorry, you had your chance and you missed it. But our God doesn't work that way. He doesn't operate that way. So in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it reads, But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see, God will release us from the slavery of sin when we are ready to be released. There will be no I told you so moment, but rather a set of open arms awaiting your arrival. Like we talked about last week at the prodigal son, you know, the son basically told his father, I wish you would die. Please give me the inheritance that I want. And he left. He comes back. What was the father doing? He was waiting. So he ran out, arms open wide, and didn't care what happened in the past. He was awaiting his arrival. Now with that being said, the longer we are a slave to sin, the longer we are a slave to our uh, personal wants and desires, the more blessings we're going to miss out on. The more blessings we will miss out on if we continue to live for the worldly pleasures. And the third picture we get to look at this morning it's verses 17 through 22. Some became fools through the rebellious ways and suffered affliction because of their infirmities. They loathed all food and drew near the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. Let them sacrifice, thank offerings, and tell of his works with songs of joy. So the third picture we get to look at this morning is God's love is unfailing because God's love does not fail to restore us. Here's another picture that is not looking so hot, right? It's not looking so good. The, the Hebrew word uh, translated sick means fools. So if we look at that first verse, it's uh, the sick. The following verses, they indicate that the author was referring to those who brought sickness upon themselves because of their sinful ways. <coughs> but once again, God did not forsake them. He did what? He restored them. In verses 19 and 20, we see the people again crying out to God. And we see God doing what again? He restoring them. He is restoring them. So when our soul is sick, God will restore us and heal us. In 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, it says, uh, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. He will restore us. And then the final picture that we get to look at this morning is verses uh, 23 through 31. And it reads, Some went out to the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, His wonderful deeds in the deep. For He spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. And their peril, their courage melted away. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. They were at their wits' end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the waters to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad when it grew calm. And he guided them to their desert haven. 
Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds to mankind. So the fourth picture that we get to look at this morning, and it's the, it's the last picture we get to look at, is God's love is unfailing because God's love does not fail to rescue us. God's love does not fail to rescue us. Here we see people in, in peril. As a matter of the context, we see that God had his hand in the storms. So when, when they were caught in the storm, God exhibited his unfailing love by rescuing them from the power of the storm. In 29 it says, he made the storm be still and he hushed the waves. So God demonstrates his unfailing love for us by rescuing us from the storms of life. You see, in the storms of life, we, we need something to hold on to because we can't do it ourselves. God is someone we can anchor to. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, it reads, We have this hope as an anchor for the soul. Firm and secure, it enters the inner sanctuary behind the curtain. So when we're going through the storms of life, God will be there. Sometimes when we cause our own storms in our life, God will be there. Or if God's hands in the midst of the storms of our life to give us an attention, He will be there. God will rescue us from any storm that we will face. And even when we are facing the storms of temptation, God will be there for us. As in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, He will also provide a way so that you can endure it. You see, it doesn't matter what kind of storm we're facing in our lives. God will be there. I want to leave you with this uh, saying, and it says, in an uncertainty world, in a world of uncertainty, one thing is certain, and that's God's unfailing love for you, for God's unfailing love for me, for all of us here this morning. So as we're sitting around the, the table this week, let us not forget about God's love for each of us. So this morning during the time of invitation, if you're going through a storm in your life that, you know, I can't do it anymore. I need that anchor to hold on to. I'm telling you, God's your anchor. And if you need to make that decision to grab a hold of Him, do it this morning. Or if you're just going through a storm in your life where you need prayer, I would love to pray with you. I want you to know that God will be there. He loves you. So this morning, please stand as we sing our final song of invitation.